Irish Football Fan TV. I'm delighted to be joined by former Republic of Ireland international uh, Keith Fahey. I don't know how I was going to go and list all the clubs, but there's been a fair few. But um, thanks for coming in and, and joining us today. It's great to have you here. My brother, cheers for having us. Um, so just to kind of start off with, um, can you tell us a little bit kind of about your your early career because we've a lot of younger fans that might. Of uh, I've, I've, I've known about your you know early days in your career. Yeah, I started playing football at about probably five or six years of age from my local side, time and born. Um, just as a kick about, I don't remember much before that. Obviously, very young, but as a kick about um, with lads up in the field, and that was it. Two f- cones for goalposts, not as advanced as it was as it is now, but. Um, yeah, I started playing with them about five or six and played with them until I was about 12 and then went to Cherry Orchard. But uh, while I was at that time in Barney, I scored loads of goals, played right back, centre back, never midfield. And um, yeah, they were probably probably my happiest days of football, you know, no pressure, scoring loads of goals, playing with your friends and uh, just really enjoying it, you know. Yeah, so when you went from was the time in Barn, what, what age did you kind of realise you were? You know, you were starting to become very good. Never, never, <laughs> never, because they never really gave myself much credit. People used to tell me how good I was, and I always had a big stick to bat at the back off myself and say, I'm not good enough for them, not doing enough, and stuff like that. But um came to about 12 years of age, and I ended up moving. My dad, God rest him, um, used to look after me, obviously, and brought me to all my football games, supported me, and let me make my own mistakes and stuff. and. Um, it came to, I think it was about eight or nine years of age, Cherry Orchard wanted to sign me, but my dad didn't let me go, and I knew nothing because I was only a child, but um, at 12 then I ended up going to Cherry Orchard and went down there and played football and went away then when I was 15, so uh, I think at 12 years of age it was probably my dad guiding me just saying, right, if you're going to do well now you need to go somewhere else, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, it was kind of good that you had that person to kind of guide you in the right Brilliant. way. Brilliant, well, you know? yeah, absolutely blessed, you know what I mean, guided to make my own mistakes and not, there was never any pressure put on me, didn't interfere with other managers, with um, managers I played for, etc, etc, so it was great to have that. I, now, I made a lot of mistakes myself, but it was great It, it was great because I learned from it, you know. Yeah, so it was from Cherry Orchard, did you, was it Arsenal you went to? Yeah, we went to Arsenal. Liam Brady had set up um, a, a coach and yeah, what a player! Yeah, a coaching thing with the DDSL, where he come over. I think it was once a month or once a week, and, and we done a training thing. And obviously, spotted me through that. We went away. We played against Arsenal. Done very well, and they wanted to sign me. Yeah. Yeah, and kind of what happened there? Um, it doesn't think you made any appearances. <laughs> no, I Jesus didn't. No, I went away as a fifteen-year-old. Uh, I had a few troubles in my past, you know, and I I, I, um, I struggled. I struggled when I went away from home. I was doing a bit of drinking. I was messing about, you know what I mean? Um, thought I knew it all and um, wasn't comfortable where I was. And something I've realised now, I was never comfortable wherever I went. It was always, there's something wrong here. Go somewhere else, you know? So yeah. um, what happened I was... That, that, that is the thing with people that uh, people don't realise. The people that haven't moved abroad or lived abroad... You don't know how hard it can be to actually just settle, and especially I can only imagine. Like I went abroad, travelled myself when I was, you know, twenty one. My my father just passed away as well, and you know I needed to get out there. I needed a break, but uh, you know how how hard it was for me then at twenty one, going going yeah. somewhere else and, and living there and trying to make it for myself. I can only imagine how you felt at, at fifteen. Like. Yeah, it was something like when I was a youngster, I always loved playing football. Football was like my escape, you know what I mean? I enjoyed it. I loved just playing, having fun, enjoying it. And it was just to get away from other stuff that was going on. So when I went to Arsenal, it got very serious very suddenly, you know what I mean? And I was manager shouting at you, um, aggressive towards you, stuff like that. Like over the top, like um, tactically and stuff like that. And I wasn't ready for it. Personally, I'm not saying everyone's like that, but personally, it got on top of me. It didn't help. Now I had troubles anyway, but um, it it didn't help, and I just I didn't want to be there. Didn't want to play football at that stage. I just wanted to. As a youngster, I was going back to what I was just saying there. I loved playing football. I didn't know I had to do all this stuff to get to yeah, where yeah. like footballers end up. If you want to do well, you know what I mean. I never had that. I want to be. A, a, a Premier League football. I just wanted to play football, but then came as I got good. I had to go away. You know what I mean? Because I did, didn't do anything else. I was really good at football again, which I never knew. But yeah, yeah. 
So you went, was it from Arsenal, then you went to, to, to Villa? How did that come from? <laughs> that came oh, about... Was, was there a move in between that? that no, that came about by me uh, messing about, wanting to move somewhere else. So I had a four-year contract at Arsenal, and then I went in. Uh, obviously, wasn't happy, wasn't happy in myself, wasn't settled, couldn't settle, moved out with different digs and all, constantly, not happy here, want to go there, not happy there, want to go here, and... Um, was that just yourself or the, pe the people in the, the that was me that was me again not being comfortable not want, not feeling comfortable in myself I know that now by taking yeah. myself out and looking back in but um, I ended up going in it got big, on a bigger scale I wanted to jump football clubs which was <laughs> crazy and I was at Arsenal and I think they just won the Premier League and the, the youth team we had uh was brilliant, you know, all the stuff was there, but yeah, I wanted to go somewhere else, and looking back on it, it wasn't, it wasn't a great move, I went to Villa, um, the same thing happened me there, you know what I mean, after a season and a half, I was doing great, everything was great, and uh, they were, I was told going home for the summer, look, you want you in the first team when you, when you come back, and again, I couldn't deal with that, I wasn't ready emotionally, I wasn't mature. Um, what, what age were you when you were at Villa? I went at about, just before, I think it was seven. Just turned, had turned seventeen. Went to, went there and um, yeah, the same stuff happened again. I ended up not feeling comfortable in myself. I came home for one one summer and just didn't want to go back. You know, I, I hated being there. I hate I hated myself. Being honest with you, you know what I mean. So I wasn't happy in myself for a long, long time. And um, yeah, I was very thankful that when I did go back, I got released and then I came home. Yeah. Yeah, and you went on to have a stint then with Pats and then, and then draw it. How, how did that come about? Were you enjoying yeah. football at that point? Yeah, I'll tell you what happened. I come back and... So I know you're you're a big hero at St. Pat's fans. <laughs> with some of them, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, but... Come to that, yeah, um, yeah, I came back. I played for Bluebell for a few games with friends and that. And uh, I ended up signing for Pats with Eamon Collins signing me. And I, I started enjoying my football again. I was missing a lot of training. Um but starting enjoying football, it was the first time I ever played in front of big crowds, you know, there was like, Richmond Park was busy, uh, it was a good feel about the place, I was playing well, and uh, yeah, it was great to be back enjoying football, you know, that's what I, I started enjoying it when I was playing well in front of crowds, crowds singing your name and all that stuff, it was nice to feel wanted, you know. Yeah, I suppose there wasn't that added pressure as much. Because I assume you you knew the manager then, and you know it wasn't as much pressure, and you probably would have spoke to you coming back, and probably been a bit more lenient. Yeah, your story kind of resonates, I think, a bit with <clears throat> James Talbot, um, because I know he went away to Sunderland and right, he had troubles, yeah. and he's back and now. He's, yeah, he's playing with the uh, Bowles now, doing really well, and he got an Ireland cap there. Great just stuff, seems to be enjoying his football again. Yeah, so I, th I think it's a kim similar enough. Now, obviously, he wasn't uh, back and forth as much, but. Um, the way the way you're describing it there, I watched an interview with uh, James and uh, and Jamie Moore on, on off the ball, right, which yeah. which was really you know insightful and, and kind of shows that that side of it that you speak of there. Yeah. But uh, you went down from Pats to draw that. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Was that a bit controversial? Was it controversial going from Pats to draw Yeah. Uh, no, because I remember um, I think Pats were struggling for money at the sta at that stage and. I had done really well, and I think Paul Bill, Paul Bill, and Paul Dolan was trying to build something up and draw it, and he was trying to build a successful team, a successful squad, and he did. And uh, credit to him. But I went there again, and I still had problems. I ended up getting sacked for drinking. You know what I mean? So uh, Paul taught me a harsh lesson, which needed to be learned. You know, yeah. so it was kind of controversial leaving there. And coming back to Pats, I think that was more, more controversial than actually going from Pats to Drogheda because I came back to Pats then and I had the attitude like I'll show you, you know what I mean? Yeah, so is, is that the, I suppose, kick up the arse that you needed? Was it the kick up the arse that I needed? At that time, yes, I had plenty more kicks up the arse. So um, now at that time, it was the kick up the arse. I'll tell you what, another thing, um, as I was playing, then I seen players going away and I thought my head was telling me you're betting them, you know, you're betting them. So um, I had a drive then that I said I, I want to go away, I want to, I want to earn money. So that's what I done in the end, 2008. I played really well. I had played well for a couple of seasons before that, but again, I think I had a reputation which uh, was warranted. And luckily enough, in 2008, got me moved back. Yeah, so that was Birmingham then. Uh, was it McLeish, the manager at the time? 
Yeah, McLeish. McLeish was the manager. Roy Aiken, assistant. Um, they, I think they were watching me for a good bit. But uh, what helped me was the, the, the teammates I had and the, the manager I had as well. Um, the European run, which was really good. We done really well that year. And uh, I played really well personally as well. And the team done great. So, like, a mixture of everything. I scored a good few goals as well, which I didn't have in my game the couple of years before. I'd scored four and five. I think the last season I went, I got 12. And uh, my performance has got a lot of assists, you know, like people are counting assists now. I counted yeah. them back then. I got an awful lot of assists, free kicks, true balls. Um, yeah, I played really good football again, but um, I thank my teammates and my manager and, yeah, uh, Alec McLeish for taking a chance on me, you know. Yeah, you had good times there. Like you won the the league cup there. Was it the Carling Cup? It was known as Carling Cup. It was yeah, yeah. When we went over, first of all, it's always changing names, so I forget. Yeah, yeah. It was it's a Carabao Cup now, isn't yeah, it? Since there last night, um, when I first went over, went over mid season in there mid season, and um, I had played a good season, obviously. So I took a little bit of a break and uh, went over then January. Started training, didn't make me debut for a few weeks because of um, some registration thing to change over. But uh, when I played, I done well and we got promoted. I scored a few good goals, um, had a couple of bad games and had more good games than bad. And uh, scored the last day of the season, got an assist and we got promoted and it was brilliant there. Yeah? yeah, and then you were saying to me off air that you actually made your Premier League debut against Man United. Yeah, was that the Man United team that was carrying Ronaldo and, and, and those players, or was he gone at that point? Ronaldo was gone at that Just point, gone. yeah. Rooney, I think Berbatov was in it. Um, Scholes, I have Scholes' jersey at home from it, but yeah. Uh, I, think it's, I think that year they still got to the Champions League final. They might have, That's yeah, yeah, yeah. When Ronaldo actually left, but anyway. Right. Yeah, no, that was great. So like, up against Scholes? It's coming up against Scholes, we saw Lee Cashley and... Uh, yeah, we done all right that game. We we lost one 0 but it was a good like it was a good account of ourselves. First, uh, my first game at the very top level, you know, like did I think my chances had gone? I probably did, you know. I never thought, and even it takes you to get over to look back in to say, mm-hmm. Jesus, I got there. You know what I mean? All these kids and uh, all the players who want to go away, they want to play at this level, and they done it. Like so, it was great. Like it was brilliant. All the stuff at Birmingham, we had promotions. You had relegations, cup wins, European runs. It was brilliant, yeah. How old were you at that point? I was uh, 26, yeah. And just as I went away, my dad got very sick. Like, and I mentioned my dad a lot because uh, because of much of a help to me he was, you know. And he got very sick and he died not long after he made my debut. So that was a hard one to take, you know. So I had all this going on. And all the ups and downs of football, and then I had this massive down with my father as well. Like so, it was, it was a tough few years now to take everything in because it happened so quickly. Like like I just said, the uh, promotions, relegations, European runs, and then we have Ireland games and all. So I was that busy with football; it was hard to uh, spend time on anything else, really. You know? Yeah, and I totally get what you mean. Look, I know this, this day is gone by, but I. Where I'll always either mention my dad. Or I don't think anyone would really understand unless it's actually happened to them. Mm. But I do totally understand where you're coming from in that regard. But I kind of look at it in a way as well. But at least he got to see you play. At least he got yeah. to see you make your debut. So that, I suppose, in one thing, is, is something that you would cherish. Ah, brilliant. Yeah, yeah, of course I do, I do. And I, like, he was definitely around for that moment, you know. So definitely do cherish that, you know. Yeah. Well, on to a more positive note. Um your your Ireland career then, um, Trapattoni the manager. Yeah. So, someone like him to, you know, call it up or whatever it must have been a massive honour. Like his stuff he's achieved in the game, especially at that point, was unbelievable. Uh, you you played a huge part uh, in the campaign to get to the Euros. I remember you did score a very important goal against Armenia out there, which I did think yeah, you got yeah. a shout out there recently at the under 19s Was it Mark? I did, yeah, yeah. You got a shout out because nice, yeah. yeah. it was in that stadium, wasn't it? In Yerevan, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah oh, yeah. Tell us a bit about the, uh, I suppose, Trapattoni, what he was like with you, and and just even the, the squad and the, and the times with Ireland, because I suppose at that point there was a, there was kind of a lot of negativity around the team saying that we weren't good enough and we were seat, sitting too deep and stuff like that. Has what, that what changed? Has it? <laughs> <laughs> What, what, what was uh, your thoughts on it as a th- as a player and and as in the squad, like as a as a as a whole? Um, firstly, I was playing well. Um, I played well at Pats and done well. Did I think I should have been the Ireland squad? No, because um, 
although he was doing well at, at League of Ireland level and European games, it wasn't consistently being challenged against the top players, you know, and that's something we've always said. Um, when I went away, I done well, yes. Um, got the call up and was delighted, obviously, this is great, like, you know, and played against Algeria and um, well, that's the team there in, in the RDS. Not sure. Argentina? No. No, my debut was against uh, Algeria, I think. I think it was, yeah. But it was in the RDS anyway. Yeah. And I thought, like, when you bring players in, sometimes you come in, they don't get brought back in again, you know. So, I, again, my head is telling me, <laughs> you're not going to get picked again, you know. Like, so, I constantly put myself under pressure to make sure I wasn't making mistakes first and foremost and try and stay within the squad. But, um, thankfully, I was picked more... I was picked for every time I was fit, you know, and I was more, I was used more than some of the people in the squad. And that's not making comparisons for myself. It was great because I didn't expect to be at such a late stage in my career. And all uh, I was twenty, I think it was twenty eight when I started playing for Ireland. And it was great within that two years of being involved with Ireland. Made sixteen uh, appearances. I scored three goals. Uh, done okay. Done average enough, you know, in training. Done very well. Um, Trapatoni, how was he with me? He was great because he picked me, you know. I liked him, he picked me. Um, how was he with the rest of the squad? Other team members will have differences of opinions. But I suppose we turned up every time we turned up for the game. We trained, uh, we prepared for the game specifically and went and played. And there was always, like, I still hear it now. Um, and especially just previous uh, managers gone that the criticisms... And expectations of the fans, yes, we want to play good football, I know. gets a certain point, they can, it was gone, I think, in the last management setup. But um, there's generally always a bit of negativity around who's managing Trap was hero at one stage, and then six months later, he's yeah. villain. Like, so that's football, that's people. Um, yeah, I had nothing, nothing but kind words to say about him. He had a couple of little disagreements as well. Um, I think I, I wanted a little break off one of the... Now, it wasn't being big time, it just was it. Uh, I didn't want to play in one of the friendies because I had a long season. I needed a bit of break. I think it was, again, what I just spoke about. I, hadn't, I never had that time off, you know, like always feeling this pressure. But uh, now I, I speak very fondly of him. He was very, uh, very generous to his, to his squad members, you know, like I, I enjoyed the time in, in, in Ireland with him, yeah. It sounds like he got on very well with him. What was he? What was he like tactically? Because I know, like he did win a lot with Juventus, and you know he was really, really big time in Serie A, and coming in with a huge reputation. And I do agree with you to to a degree about this. There is this, you know, fairy tale that some people live out in their heads that Ireland can get the ball down and start being like Barcelona, and they say this thing where you know, oh, they're professional footballers; they should be able to pass the ball on the ground. I do think, like, and you would have witnessed the first time, but like you're coming up against world class players. Like, this, uh, I know they found a picture of you there the other day with you know Schweinsteiger and these mm. types of players, and they're coming at you so quickly and stuff like that. And you know, they do. You probably could be answer this better than me, but it always seems like they're you know a step ahead of other other players. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, tactically, how was he? It was from what I seen the stuff he showed us on videos before games. Um, happened in the games more often than not so he wasn't far off the money on that like um, he did show us long balls little flick ons and us scoring from him so he was uh, letting us know in a positive way that's how we can score goals he wasn't telling us that's the only way to score goals but um, it was a strength I suppose. it was a strength and like he, he showed it in videos of, uh, of it happening so you couldn't disagree with it you know what I mean um, in terms of other countries, I don't know. Like um, I know from from our from our country, like are we blessed with technical players? We have technical players, Eddie, as good as other countries. I don't think so. Um, I don't know what other countries do, but they seem to produce more technical players than Ireland. Um, I think it's hard at international level as well when you're with. It's a results business at the top end of the game. It is results business, so. Um, the managers have to think of what's the best way to get a win, whether that's a one nil against a Gibraltar, whether it's a it's a draw or whatever against Germany or a win. Um, that's what we have to do really at that end of the game, and that's the manager will be criticised whether he wins games or loses games, you know, um, or whether he 
Uh, he won't be criticised if he wins, but he might be on his, the yeah. way he plays, you do, know what I, I mean? I think that's a point now, because a lot of people are calling for the likes of uh, Troy Parrott and stuff to be called in, into the squad, and Mix came out himself, Mick McCarthy, and yeah. said, you know, you know, it's all well and good if I had more time like I did back in 2002 where I yeah. was to build a team, but the, at the moment I have to get results. Yeah, So I yeah. do get what you're saying there. Yeah, I think it's hard, like, as well, the style of play, like, we've always... I think we've always been this type of solid country, solid team and grind out wins, you know. Hard to break down. Hard to break down, yeah. And I think if if we're trying to go away from that um, overnight, really, look, I, I won't get too complicated on what I'm saying. I think we stick to what we're good at. Um, what could I say about it? Tactically, I, don't, I think it's a lot to change. Um, from years of what we've done in the past, you know what I mean? I don't think we have enough time with the international players or all at different clubs to bring them in for four days and then all of a sudden we see them on a Wednesday night playing a different brand of football, you know? Yeah, I, I think that's because Kieran, who would do a lot of stuff with me, is a coach as well and he always reiterates that fact is that if you're coming in and you're trying to work with a team for three days and you might not, they might not come on a Monday and you have the game maybe Thursday and you, I imagine... That the Wednesday, because it's the day before the game, is a very light session. No, I don't know. You'd have been there first hand. Yeah, yeah, sense. yeah. Yeah, we'll I imagine be, yeah. the day beforehand, it's so you'd have maybe one day they arrive and they might arrive at the night, and then you have the one day maybe to train, and then it's the light session, and then it's the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're basically just turning up, putting a bit of shape on the teams, and uh, put a bit of shape in the team, bit of training, and get ready for the game. A lot of the stuff is tactical. You know what I mean? Yeah. But what was what was the, the lads like with Keno and uh, Duffer and stuff like that? They, they were huge personalities. Yeah, they were. Like I, I come in just Did, in time. They, with you? they were brilliant with me. Yeah, uh, Robbie, Damien, uh, Richie, like we Shay, we had a good like they were the backbone of the Irish team for a long time, you know. And I feel very lucky to have been involved with them, you know. I wouldn't be too fond of getting up on chairs and singing though, you know what I mean? I didn't like that part of it, but. Uh, yeah, like, it's like any walk of life, there's people you get on with, people you don't get on with, you know, a lot of stuff that I used to think was my own problem, not someone else, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, um, just kind of on that then, you, your, uh, your Birmingham career, um, yeah. you left there, was that a case of your, your, your father and, and other things? When I left, I tell you what happened, um, I... We had a yeah, change of. No, you're already early. Um, though we were at the, I was there. I was injured for a long time. Came back into the team. Didn't do so well. Took me a while to get going. Uh, a bit of a disagreement at the club, and uh, I moved on. I moved on. I went home again. I I got a bout of anxiety, depression. Came home and uh, rushed back again because football was the most important thing in my life. And football, football, football. It's not like you know what I mean. Um, I rushed back and, and eventually got released. But what happened? Um, I just I took its course. It ran its course. The time of Birmingham had ran its course. My time in England had ran its course with me personally because, again, this pressure I used to put on myself. I was like, right, my thought was, I'm not a few bob there. Go back, relax, and relax. That's really it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Were you then worried then maybe financially after a while then? Because of that, was I? Relaxed. No, I, I'm fine. Like it's not, it's not. Again, I went when I was younger. I played football to enjoy football. Went away, um, and I didn't enjoy. It. So then I stopped playing at that level. Came home and got back and joined it. And then I said, Jesus, I'm not happy. Still not happy in myself, you know. So I said, I tell you what, make me happy if I go back and earn money. So I tried it, going back, earned a few bob. Still not happy. So. Um, Look, when I got out of football, eventually I was able to look back in on all that and realise that I I suffer with I suffer with mental health issues, anxiety, depression, all that type of thing. Of other addictions as well that I struggle with. So, um, it's great being having been through football and having a good career. Like I realise now, I made it very hard on myself because of what I suffer with. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, now very grateful to be sitting here today. You know? Yeah. Well, you you went. It was a patch you signed for when you came back then. So yeah, how, yeah, how yeah, that, yeah. How did that come back, uh, come about? With how did it come about with the club? Because I imagine that you didn't you didn't leave bat, Pat on any bad terms, did you? No, we didn't. I left on good terms. Went away. Um, I I had a hip operation. I think um, when I was. 
when I finished up at Birmingham, I had a hip operation and then I was at home for a while and I was trying to get rehabilitate that and all. And then I went back to Sheffield United with Nigel Clough there a couple of months and then I dislocated my toe. So I just said, just go home, like, you know. So I was sick of rehabbing injuries and all that. Uh, went home and I don't know how it came about, but I spoke to Liam Buckley on the phone and um, yeah, it was signed within within a couple of days, really, you know. And that's I've always felt comfortable at Pats. Like I was looking, I was looking for that comfort that I never had. Like other than when I was playing my football, really at Pats, and um, ended up going back. And I had unfinished business as well, like the FAI Cup final. I got sent off and me lost back in two thousand three, so I felt. I owed the fans or I owed the club something. So that was a part of my thinking that I need to go back and I need to finish the job, you know. Yeah, so then talk me through, I suppose, the good times at Pats then because you're obviously coming off at a bit of a low and you're getting back to a high then with Pats. It was great to finish off at, at um, Pats uh, on a high, yeah, and um, winning the cup, like, it was 53 years and it was great. Everyone had a great time. And, yeah, it was business for me. It was, right, that box is ticked. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. And did you have any aspirations with the the League of Ireland in Europe then? Um did you, did you feel like there was any unfinished business there? In or Europe. Like, how do you think kind of in general teams fare in Europe? You can kind of come on to the kind of modern Yeah. But yourself back then. And um, back then I think we were we were close to doing something now. I think the game against Hertha the Berlin we probably for about I'd say 20 25 minutes in the first leg we were outplayed well outplayed and we lost the, we lost the toy over that 20 minutes you know um how how do i see it now like i, I watched i've watched obviously rove i was up there in uh in Tala last couple of weeks ago and uh, they done very well um i seen the first half the other night i didn't see the rest of the game i've watched bits of dundalk obviously dundalk are the leaders in in the league that the leaders in performing in Europe lately, they have the players, um, they've momentum. Um, I think that they have as well as is they've a good squad of nearly two players for nearly every position. They do, I yeah. Think that's the their backbone is to do is like Shamrock Rovers have a very good squad, but then when you go to the depths of it, it's not wouldn't be as strong. But I think they're building on that now. Yeah, that's for Rovers. Like, like um, obviously building from the academy up. Um, yeah, they're producing a lot of players, and they're they're, they're going across the water. They well. are, yeah. Like um, we are, I should say. Um, it's great that the facility is up there. The kids coming in day in day out and enjoying themselves and getting a lot of tactical and a lot of good coaching through, like of Stephen Gray, Shane Robinson, Aidan Price up there. Um, they're building from the bottom up, which is great, you know. Um, we look at this other, like people are talking about the League of Ireland under thirteen. Is it too young? What about fourteen? There's no, there's a gap year there, like which needs to be looked at. And uh, what I'm told now, I don't have massive opinions because I like to work with, from within the group when working. But um, yeah, going back to the European stuff, like uh, Rovers done well this season. It's great to see Tallis Stadium full. Um, great to see performances like Jack Bourne, like I mentioned earlier, like people, someone said on the Twitter there, um, who's the favourite player to watch, I would say him. Um, he's three and four passes ahead of, of everyone on the pitch, I feel, when he receives the ball. His body position is playing nearly two passes ahead of what what's going on. It's great great to see him, great to see him doing so well in Europe, assists. Um, and like that, Jack, Jack can be... An Ireland regular, Jack could be a Rovers regular. It's up to Jack what he wants to do, you know. Yeah, it's kind of it's actually kind of similar to yourself, kind of the way he came back on off a, off a bit of a low, um, and it's starting to do well, you know, starting to get recognised again. And he came out, he came back to Ireland with a big reputation, you know, he's starting to live up to that. Uh, I think I said to you off air, is some of the his performance has kind of been a bit bit average till the break came in, and then he's kind of gone back up to that level again that he was doing early early on when he got the call up and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But um, is there anyone else besides Jack that kind of you, you look at <coughs> and you think of? I know that, you know who I actually have a big fan of is young Brandon Kavanagh. There, Brandon, right? yeah, yeah, he looks like a very good player. Yeah, he's a good player as well. Um, he's left side, isn't he? Yeah, he kind he of plays it. number. He's left footed. Yeah, yeah. Ten when he comes on. No? Yeah, he's done well. Yeah, I haven't seen. I haven't. To be honest, now I haven't seen an awful lot of Brandon. I haven't seen an awful lot of the first team games. Um, we'd be that busy in what we're doing with an air group that 
Uh, when you do get a bit of time off, you like to enjoy a yeah. little bit of downtime. But um, yeah, there's definitely good players. Again, I always say there's always good players in the league. Dundalk stand out. Rovers have got a little bit closer to them this season. Um, I like the way Rovers are playing the football. You know, like uh, good, attractive playing playing out from the back, playing through midfield. Um, Dundalk, yeah, Duffy's a good player. Shields done great in there. Yeah, Sean Hall. Seems Hart. to be getting better every season. The two of them. Yeah, Sean, I played with uh, um, at Pats. Uh, very good, very good defender. Good on the ball, strong the tackle, good ball into midfield. I loved playing with Sean because he just wrapped the ball into a good pass, good firm pass into it. It's funny because last year he actually got a player of the month and he was playing out of position at right back. Yeah, dog, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. that does make sense the way he's good on the ball as yeah. well. And very good defensively. I think again, like Chris Shields, he's improving year on year, and they just you can see that I suppose with their performances in Europe and so yeah, on. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Now we are recording this while the Doc are playing tonight against the uh, Bratislava yeah. away. So best of really? luck to them. Um, hopefully, you get a result and can take it back to um Oriel Park. But uh, just kind of the last couple of questions, then just kind of on uh, life after football and your coaching mm-hmm. with the uh, the Rovers under thirteens and. Yeah, be thirteen. Be thirteen is national league from January. So yeah, people ask me what age group I is. We came from under twelves. We're going to play under fourteen DDSL in September, and then we're going under thirteens in in, uh, in January. So to answer your question, what age group we? I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, two thousand seven is anyway. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then, um, kind of, what's what's the next chapter for you? Is just, are you going to you're doing your badges, is that right? The only badges, yeah. It took me time doing them because uh, I've been sorting out a few bits over the last year, but uh, I've been taking me time, taking along. Um, I'm doing them at the moment, yes. And my the next chapter, the next chapter for me is this chapter. So I'll just study this chapter and see where the next chapter brings me. You know, just keeping busy, basically, and keeping your your, your mind. Free yeah, and happy and- yeah. It's keeping busy and helping other people and. Um, I think when I finished playing football, I thought, Jesus, life is over, you know what I mean? And it took me a long time to get over it, but I realised um, I realised in the last year what's important, and um, I've, I've realised that I can be happy without playing football as well, you know, and there's other things in life, like giving a bit back, coaching, helping others, and uh, yeah, that's where I'm at at the moment. I'm enjoying myself. Um, I'm still very intense. I'm very intense as a footballer. Very intense as uh, as how we prepared for things. I'm still like that. Um, I try not to be too intense with the kids, which I'm not. I like the kids enjoy themselves. They get loads of tactical stuff. They get loads of uh, times to have fun because we have to remember the 11, 12 year olds. Um, yeah, that's where I'm at at the moment. I'm, I have peace of mind, which is something I didn't have for a long, long time. You know. Well, that's good, and that's good to hear, <laughs> to, to hear you saying that because. Yeah. Uh, I, I actually didn't know a lot, a lot of the stuff from when I, when I was sitting here and yeah, I had notes yeah. there and stuff like that kind of went a bit off but like uh, the incredible honesty uh, yeah, honestly it's yeah. probably been my favourite interview in regards to just the, the honesty out of it but good, uh, good. we have a couple of questions from, from fans that uh, have tweeted in so we'll just read them out so the first question I have is um, <coughs> from at LOI fan uh, how does he feel about his time in England with Birmingham you've already kind of answered that yeah. earlier on in the, in the video uh, how does he feel about Roadstone project and the underage setup at Rovers? Brilliant, yeah. Um, we kind of answered that a little bit as well. That's great that Rovers as a club are building from the bottom up. They have been for a long time. Um, the culture about trying to play out from the back, trying to play through midfield and all, it's great. Like I'm delighted to be involved up there. Um, delighted to be working with the kids where I, where I feel comfortable to be able to teach and uh, guide youngsters um, along football while maintaining the fact of enjoying it as well. So to answer the question, I, I've uh, feel privileged to be involved with it. Okay, um, and then did he enjoy his? T- this is the same part. Did he enjoy his time with uh, Rovers and the LOI in general? Fats, you're a legend. Most underrated footballer to play in the league. Thank you very much. Um, did I enjoy my time at Rovers? I did. I tell you why because I had. Um, Pat Fenlon was there and he was very fair to me, he was very fair within the group um, and he was a great manager to play for, for that short amount of time. Now we played only 12 games, um, I had a long knee injury and just happened at the wrong time, you know, going to Rovers and, um, well, the right time, whatever way you want to look at it, but 
I ran out of steam, my body caved in on me and unfortunately, or fortunately, I had to check it in then, you know. So I did enjoy my time there. Yeah, great club. I'm only literally five minutes from the stadium. The balls around the place, especially around the European games, has been brilliant there. Yeah. Well, there you are, uh, at LOI fan. Um, so Sean O'Carroll asked Coach World Guide, uh, which player is he most excited about in the League of Ireland? I've answered that as well, haven't I? Jack, Jack Bourne, yeah. yeah, like just um, watching him. Um, like I'd be comparing, I did like, I do like still Dylan Watts, a good player driving yeah. forward with the ball. Um, I like players that remind me of myself, you know what I mean? Because I see, well, see I think a drive. You do that too, but because if you're playing in centre midfield, you'd be watching for that type of player who would yeah. be kind of. Fair player gets on the ball and looks for the pickups of those key passes, as you say. Playmakers, yeah. Um, like I said, Jack's uh, three, four passes ahead of what's going on on the pitch. You know, even his body shape will tell you that when he's receiving the ball. Dylan, um, Dylan, like Greg Bulger, uh, look, I enjoyed playing with him. He did, although we didn't play enough together, but uh, it's been brilliant this season for Shamrock. Yeah, Rogers he has. Yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. Ball. I still believe he's the best at that position. In the league, like I don't think there's a better uh, defensive midfielder in that number six role. Like Chris Shields, I still would have Greg. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That might be Chris, kind of. <laughs> yeah, it might be. Yeah, that's fine. Like that's what football is yeah, all about, means, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, yeah. I still think, just to let you know, Chris has done brilliant, and from in my opinion, now this is only my opinion. Yeah. I think Chris has done brilliant, and I can't, I can't believe from where he's came from at Bray. How much he's improved, side volleys, shots at goal. Uh, we all know he can run around and tackle, but he's adding other bits to his game, and you see that coming on year by year. So, uh, credit to him as well, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a big fan of his as well. Um, so, does a Paul Kiernan um, at St. Kiernan 1963? I imagine he's a bit, a bit old. Right. But, um, do you forgive me for the abuse I gave you when you went to Rovers? Honest question, you were my hero. Honest question deserves an honest answer. Yeah, I forgive you, Paul. <laughs> you, uh, I hope you're happy with that. Uh, a guy you just mentioned there, uh, Greg Balger, tweeted in. He said, does he still have the fond memories I have from our trip to Poland in 2014? A wink face, uh, an emoji, and a laughing face. <laughs> oh, you have the fond memories of the game, which you played very well, and I don't remember much after that. So, yeah, I, I remember what I need to remember. It was a long night there. Okay, okay. <laughs> I don't think it, it's for, for, uh, for the airways. No. And then um, Buzzer Rowe spoke about uh, your good pal. He was talking about, uh, or he told me that he had uh, some stories in which he could tell you, and one you brought up was uh, the Aller. So, yeah, what, what is that all? A story, um, I think, I, think I, I had my brother and his friend over for the weekend, uh, and Buzzer and another lad, Keith Raid, and Rasha come down from, uh, I think it was this time, but. Not sure, uh, come down from Sunderland. And we were basically out one night, and again, don't remember a lot of it, but uh, there was a big dog in a pub. <laughs> uh, I think my brother was staying up in, in the Dubliner in Birmingham. There was bedrooms above it and all, and this mad dog was in between the pub and the bedrooms, and it was, I don't know what happened, but I remember just a mad, crazy alsatian, yeah. <laughs> all right, well, um... <laughs> Just to wrap up then, I just want to say a huge thanks to yourself for coming in and um, honestly, it's, it's been great to have you and, and the incredible honesty out of you and I didn't realise how much hardship you actually went through. Um, so I appreciate you coming in and taking the time out of your day to come in and tell your, your story. So yeah. very much appreciate it. Cheers for having us, Paul. appreciate it and I really enjoyed it. Thanks. Um, guys, if you liked this video, drop a like on the video. Um, if you're not subscribed, please do so now and if you want more videos, let us know in the comments. All right, thanks for watching. I'm going to speak to you soon. Thank you.